Now y'all see how all these blog posts and me supporting R. Kelly, right? About the resentencing. But I posted something today on my Instagram. It was four slides and I had a caption on it. And no blog don't want to repost that. You see, it's so easy for them to control the narrative and try to make me look crazy. But I stand on business, man. Straight up. But I just want to let y'all know, ain't none of y'all vlogs. Y'all post me support be a, not be a kind of free deal, be a already free. But R. Kelly. But y'all don't post what I post today about the slides and the calf. The truth hurts. So I've got to ask you first what your reaction was to yesterday's verdict. Well, I, I can't state enough how disappointed I was. You know, we were involved in the New York trial uh, for a long time. And in the months leading up to it, a couple of months beforehand, he made a decision to change his legal team. Uh, I was just saying this morning that it was sort of like uh, starting Justin Fields in his first NFL game this weekend for the Bears, which didn't really work out too well. Uh, he went with a very inexperienced crew, and I think they got slaughtered. That's unfortunate because I think that uh, he should have won that case. I don't think it was a racketeering enterprise. While there may be things, as people have said, in his past that he did that were wrong or immoral or distasteful, uh, it doesn't really, in my opinion, rise to the level of a federal criminal case. So it sounds like, Steve, you're taking issue with the racketeering portion of it. What, elaborate on that for me. Right. Well, what the prosecutors did, and, and people have recognized this, is they got extraordinarily creative. And I, I'm a firm believer that if a prosecutor has to get creative in order to figure out what you did that was illegal, then what you did probably wasn't illegal. Uh, let's face it, they, they brought essentially a, a squirt gun to a knife fight. They didn't have any witnesses lined up uh, and they weren't prepared for it. There's problems with the jury instructions in the case. There's problems with the uh, breadth of the evidence that was presented. I think it was an extraordinarily unfair trial where the government was allowed uh, to, to bring in all sorts of other people to sort of tell their story without any backup. And and they weren't charged crimes. It's what they call other crimes evidence, but there was way too much of it. It's why Bill Cosby's conviction got reversed uh, in his case, because it's just patently unfair. Well, I mean, we still heard some pretty damaging testimony, some graphic, you know, information right, was brought to the it, stand. Here, so how does that impact the case then? I mean, it's out there now. So that had to have impacted the jury's decision. It, it, that, and now you're saying exactly what I'm saying. So what did that have to do with anything? For instance, he was alleged to have, um, in one instance, bribed somebody so that he could marry Aaliyah. What actually happened with Aaliyah, why that may have happened, wasn't relevant. He was alleged in, in a few incidents to have uh, transported people across state lines for the purpose of having sex. That's fine. All that was relevant, and, and you know, I'm, I'm a lawyer, so we break these things down. And like you said, jurors will look at it more, more broadly, which is why you want to narrow it down. They brought them across state lines for sex. What was relevant was they had sex. It wasn't relevant how they had sex. Uh, all these people that were allowed to say that R. Kelly gave them herpes when those particular counts of the charges 
didn't have anything to do with whether or not he gave them herpes. Um, just all sorts of problems, but his his attorneys, and I, I, I don't mean to Monday morning quarterback everyone, but, you know, they, they were ill-prepared. They didn't uh, file the motions they needed to file. They didn't push back against the evidence, and he got railroaded and steamrolled. <laughs> Well, so when was the last time you spoke to R. Kelly without, you know, saying anything that's going to violate, you know, attorney client privilege? Well, I, that's that's really not. I mean, I speak to him. OK, how's he doing? He's doing terrible. He, he had his entire life uh, taken out from from beneath him. You know, this is a man who really should be a billionaire. Right. Sold more albums than Whitney Houston, more albums than Michael Jackson. And when I had first met him, he was living in a one-bedroom apartment that he rented because everybody has stolen from him over the years. Everyone has taken advantage of R. Kelly. Now, I understand that some of the choices he made in life are not such good choices. Um, and, and that in the, in the 90s, maybe he made choices uh, that are now coming back to haunt him. And I think the case here in Chicago might be a little bit different factually than the case in New York. But the case in New York is is really where people are capitalizing. All of these people went on this so-called documentary. All of them got wined and dined. Are we going to say the documentary people were grooming them? All of them benefited from dumping on R. Kelly, who's now going to sit in jail for years for what was 95 percent consensual sex. prosecuted under a New York misdemeanor statute that had never been used to prosecute anybody. It had been on the books since 1944. Lots of people have given people herpes. Lots of people have given people the clap since 1944. And no one was prosecuted on it. And they made it into a federal crime by claiming that he did it. He crossed state lines. He went to New Jersey. That's how the case ended up there. But let's look at some of the other people. His former girlfriend, Azriel, who was very honest in, in when she testified, I will say, and she said, my mother sent me to a concert and said, you make this man fall in love with you. You're going to have his babies. You're going to be his girl, so on and so forth. They prayed on him. They prayed on him. And, and for them to now come to court and say they are victims is just being intellectually dishonest. But, but so you're saying that R. Kelly's the victim here? Absolutely. The 55-year-old multimillionaire is the victim? Well, he's not the multimillionaire. But yes, I believe he is a victim of people who wanted the situation, were in this situation. No one complained about anything. That's what people forget. No one complained until agents and prosecutors and TV producers went out and found these people. Nobody had complained. They didn't complain to their friends. They didn't complain to their family. They didn't complain to the media. Um, as you all know, um, Mr. Uh, Kelly has some literacy issues, so it's really important um, for... Um, <laughs> it's there's there's a great deal of things that have to be explained in a little a little more slowly. So, but in terms of the sentence, how does he feel about the number of sentences? Well, I mean, obviously he's devastated. Thirty years in prison is like a life sentence for him. But um, at the same time, um, you know, we knew the government was asking for twenty five years. We we were prepared for what. Um, the judge might impose. So it didn't come as a great big surprise. Um, we were prepared for it, um, and we are now prepared to fight uh, this appeal. For us, it's just the beginning of the fight, frankly. So we were prepared going in for today, and he and he's doing okay with it, despite it being a Speaking of the fence, why did he not want to... A, st a statement in allocution? Uh, well, it, that was on advice of counsel. That was on my advice. Why? Um, because he has pending cases. It's obvious. He's got pending cases, and uh, he has a Fifth Amendment right to remain remain silent, and I advised him to invoke that Fifth Amendment route. I promise you, he does want to make a statement. He will make statements eventually, but on the advice of counsel, he remains silent today. Will you be putting in an appeal? 
<laughs> How soon will you be put in this Okay, so the appeal will lay out that the enterprise that was charged, as you will see if you've read my post-trial motions, which you probably have not, um, our position is this was not a re re RICO or racketeering act violation. Um, these were isolated events that happened many years ago, and the government simply tried to plead around the statute of limitations to bring it in a RICO uh, charge, which was inappropriate. So, I mean, all I can tell you is there was no enterprise. There was no enterprise. It was one man with allegations by a number of women, which doesn't make it an enterprise. And that is why he's not guilty of, of, of racketeering. You said he was remorseful. What did you mean by that? You said he didn't have to confess, but that he was remorseful. I, I said, I I said, I said he has regrets and he is sad. Nobody wants to hear um, uh, what, and what he heard today. He's a human being. He feels what other people are feeling. Um, but that doesn't mean that he can accept responsibility in the way that the government would like him to and the way other people would like him to because he disagrees. He is not, um, he disagrees with the characterizations that have been made about him. But that doesn't mean he's not a human being and can't feel feel something when other people are in pain. Is his abuser here today? You said that his sister abused him as he was a kid. He has four people here today. Three yes, he has, he has a number of uh, friends here today. Um, no, his sister is not here today. He's Only been, sister. he's been, um, He's been estranged from her for quite some time. Um, no, his sister is not here today. He's Only been sister. he's been um, he's been estranged from her for quite some time. Um, no, his sister is not here today. He's Only been sister. he's been um, he's been estranged from her for quite some time. Um, he has two brothers who are fully in support of him, who were also victims of sexual abuse in his household. Um, so they are here in spirit, although not here personally. Um, and um, so, no. And what do you say to people who say he's a predator? Have you had the opportunity to speak to Joy? Yes, I speak to Joy regularly, and Joy is just fine. She is sad, but she told him, and she sent me a text message telling him to pray um, and put God's, you know, put it in God's hands. And she loves him, and she's, and they're going to get through this. That's what she had to say to him is he today. A no, he's not. No, he's not a predator. Anybody, anything? Where's the other members of the? Jennifer Bonjean, B-O-N-J-E-A-N.